OK, so this is Phys 2320 Computing 2, and this is the first unit in a set of video tutorials on the SciPy package. Um, so if you're a, a student registered on this module, you'll be able to download the workbook um, or a PDF version of these slides uh, from Minerva. OK, so the first part of the video tutorial unit, I'm going to go and just give a brief introduction to um, how we go about using SciPy, um, and in particular with functions that we're uh, written ourselves that describe some sort of physics problem. So one of the things that SciPy contains a lot of uh, functions for that are designed to help you uh, analyze a, uh, a model system. And by model system, I mean a set of equations where you can write those equations as Python functions. So SciPy is designed to go and take a Python function that you've written and be able to do things like find out where the minimum of that function is or the maximum of that function or where the roots are. Um, and um, these, of course, are all um, examples of, of things you might want to go and do in physics. And I'll say a little bit at the end of this uh, part about the sort of situations in which you might want to do each of these things. Um, but these are all what we call optimization problems. The general principle of what we're going to do is we're going to have some function we've written, um, which is going to describe our physics system in some way. It's going to have an independent variable that um, is describing uh, something about the some parameter in the system, some something that's varying over time. So uh, varying over. The, the way we're using the functions that might be over time, it might be over position. Um, uh, and then there might be also some other parameters that describe the, the, the situation we're trying to model. And what we're going to do is we're going to be evaluating those functions, looking at the results of that, and then adjusting our independent variable, calling the function again, and seeing whether we've got any closer to a minima or a maxima or a root. Um, and that's kind of what SciPy is going to do for us. So in order to go and do this, SciPy needs to understand something about um, the functions we're asking it to work with. And in particular, it needs to know how to call those functions in a way that's sensible. So we have to have some conventions about how we write our functions so that they're going to work with SciPy properly. So if we take as a kind of very simple example, suppose we're trying to use SciPy to analyze a quadratic equation. So mathematically, we'd probably just write f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And in this case, we'd say x is the independent variable. So if you were to make a plot of this function, you'd plot x along the bottom, along the horizontal axis, and you'd plot f of x on the y-axis. And you would understand that a, b, and c are parameters that um, you could change to describe different fat curves within this overall family of quadratic curves. So if we wanted to be kind of strict about this, probably A, B, and C ought to really be parameters in that function as well. So really we should write F of X, A, B, and C is A, X squared plus B, X plus C. So the convention is that we're going to define ourselves a function to use in, in Python with SciPy. We always put the independent variable, the X in this case, as the first parameter in the def line for the function. And all the other parameters that you need in order to go and control the shape of that, fun uh, that function you're calculating, so the A, the B, and the C in this case, follow on afterwards. And so we define a function in the same order as, as I've just put on the previous slide. And the other convention that we need to follow is that those functions must work with X as either a scalar, a single number, or as an array of numbers. And it should return its results in the same format as it got the x. So if you give x as a scalar, this function should return a value as a scalar. And if you pass x as an array, then it should return an array of answers, which is the same shape, so the same size and length as x. So for our simple case here, we can do it like this. Um, and we can make use of the fact that um, in numpy arrays, I can just write a times x uh, or b times x. And if x is an array, it'll give me an array back. So this second point about having to make things work as an array or as a scalar 
in many cases, it's really quite easy. And if you make use of the numpy exponential sine, cos, tan, whatever functions, then generally speaking, it'll normally just work for you. Um, and you won't have to go and do anything clever to try and work out whether X is an array or a scalar. Um, there are some circumstances in which you might have more complicated model functions where you do need to do a bit of extra work, but often you can just write it down as a nice simple equation and it just works. So uh, during this video tutorials, we're going to make quite a lot of use of plotting out these functions um, and sort of showing how things work. And obviously, as I said, we're going to want to make sure that we're using uh, numpy maths functions. So what we're going to do is we're just going to import matplotlib and numpy. And I'm also going to create a little helper function that's going to make some nice plots for us. So there we go. We do the imports. Um, and um, then this make plot function um, is just going to uh, create a plot of a reasonable size. It's going to put the axes at x and y equals 0. Um, and it's going to set the limits up, depending on what we pass it in the, in the call. Um, OK, so um, it's always good practice when you start working with a function to just make sure that when you have defined your maths function, that it looks what you're going to expect. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll try and just check that our quadratic function, um, uh, if you set a is equal to 1, b is minus 4, and c to plus 3, we can test this just, we look at this and know that um, this function is going to have roots at uh, 1 and 3, and it's going to have a minimum at 2. <laughs> and so we can just go and check by plotting it that that's indeed what, what it's going to do. So here you can see I've defined a, b, and c. Um, I've defined a set of x, um, and then I'm going to make a plot by calling it with x, and then a call to that quadratic data, uh, quadratic function with the x, a, b, and c that I've defined. And it makes a nice plot, and it shows me, yes, indeed, you can just look at it and go, yes, there are roots at 1 and 3, and there's a minimum of about 2. So good, no surprises there. So, of course, well, why are we interested in doing this? Well, um, there are lots of situations in physics where you need, end up trying to find the minima or the maxima of functional roots. So, for example, if the function you're working with is defining, uh, say, an energy, um, so that might be an energy as a function of time or an energy as a function of position. Um, so, for example, if you've calculated a bond energy um, as a function of position, you know, something like a, a uh, based on a Leonard Jones 612 potential or an ionic bonding uh, potential, um, then the minimum of that value is going to be the equilibrium bond length. And so you could say, let's go and work out based on this function where its minimum is. Um, alternatively, if the function to calculate was a bonding force, for example, then you'd be interested in looking at where the root of that function was. Where did the force cross zero? Where was it in equilibrium? Um, so there are many situations like this where you're going to end up trying to find minima um, and, and roots, and occasionally you also want to go and find maxima. So, for example, if that's kind of describing some kind of trajectory of a projectile um, and you've put in terms to go and calculate against, I don't know, air resistance and as well as gravity and so on, then the maxima might be a thing you're interested in finding. So... Um, of course, what SciPy doesn't know is it doesn't understand that what you're doing with is a particular physics problem. So as far as SciPy is concerned, you're just giving it a mathematical function that's defined as a Python function. And that Python function you're giving it is going to take that, whatever that independent variable is first, and then the other parameters it needs to know to get it to work. And what SciPy is going to be doing is just simply evaluating that function, seeing whether it's getting closer to its end goal, um, if it is, it takes another step, moves a bit closer and evaluates the function again and iterates over time until it decides it's reached a close enough result um, so that you can, you've identified the, um, the, the root or the minima or whatever it is you're after. Now, of course, in many situations, you could just solve the function analytically, but that's not what SciPy is doing. And the advantage of it is it means that you can have functions which are impossible to solve analytically. So that might be simply because there is no good way of solving. The equation is too complicated. There's no way of actually solving it just with pencil and paper analytically to figure out where the minimum is or figure out where it's equal to zero. 
or it might be for example that you've got um i don't know some sort of integral term inside your equation so you have to integrate something up over your equation inside your equation in order to get an answer but whatever reason you you this is good where you don't have an analytical solution um and you need to go and actually evaluate the function fully and so that's how scipy is doing it now the flip side of this with numerical anytime you go into numerical analysis like this is you are going to have some degree of error so some degree of um the answer you get from the computer is not the precise answer you would get if you had done the thing analytically if it was possible to do it analytically um, and so a lot of what we're going to be talking about here today is um, both sort of recognizing when you've got situations where the numerical algorithms it's using, the way it's actually going to find these minima or roots are going to fall over and break down.